my name is Guy Robinson. I am a Territory Service Manager with uh, Tektronix Corporation and I manage the calibration labs in the Texas region. I'm also an ASQ certified auditor and a lead assessor for the American Association for Laboratory Accreditation or A2LA. What I'd like to cover are explaining what are calibration levels, go over the types of calibration levels that exist, take a look at the typical standards that we calibrate against in the industry, talk a little bit about which calibration level you should consider to help you make sure that you're meeting your needs. And then at the end, a summary slide of what calibration levels Tektronix itself provides to our customers. So what are calibration levels? The term calibration level is just the way that we refer from a calibration provider standpoint to the things that we need to be able to perform the calibration correctly according to the standard that the customer wants us to calibrate against. It helps us determine what level of detail or specific requirements are going to be needed to calibrate a piece of equipment, as well as the types of actual standards themselves, meaning equipment that we use to do the calibration, and any data that's going to be necessary. And each of the different calibration levels uh, requires uh, different activities. The typical calibration levels include the three things that we are gonna go over next, which are traceable calibration, compliant calibration, and accredited calibration. Each level of calibration has its own pros and cons. In the case of a traceable calibration, this calibration is the basic level of calibration and is typically considered the minimal acceptable level. It does provide a certificate and it contains some traceable statements on it from the vendor. And it often identifies the equipment used to perform the calibration and when that equipment was last calibrated and some traceable information so that it can be looked at, uh, the history of that equipment can be tracked to see where it was calibrated. On the con side, the, the provider doesn't claim typically adherence to any recognized standard necessarily. It only provides a statement that the equipment that was used to perform the calibration itself was calibrated. Data and uncertainty may or may not be provided unless requested by the customer. And there is no overseeing accrediting body or other agency that verifies the provider's statements. Another level of calibration is compliant calibration. This level does claim compliance to a particular standard by the vendor. It is often an OEM type of calibration. And the OEM claims the calibration compliance and is usually willing to back it up with data to support their claim. There are multiple levels that are available and typical standards include uh, ISO 9001, either of the ANSI and CSL Z540 standards and the 17025 standard from ISO for calibration. The con of this, of course, is that there still is not a verification of this compliance claim by an outside agency. It's the responsibility of the customer to decide if they're going to accept the claim or not accept the claim of the provider. The third level of calibration is the accredited calibration. An accredited level calibration is one that's been assessed and awarded by an accredited facility to the facility doing the calibration work itself. It's verified and documented by an independent accrediting body like A2LA that I mentioned earlier. It is overseen by the ISO group in uh, Switzerland and they also go out and inspect these accrediting bodies and oversee them as well to make sure that they're providing proper accreditation protocols. Accredited facilities maintain extensive records and they have to meet very exacting requirements. It's a compliance requirement that they must show evidence that they comply with each of the standards that they get accredited to. Uh, they are able to accredit companies to any standard that they request but typically the three are the Z540.1 and three standards as well as 17025. And several laboratories carry all three of these particular standards. There aren't a lot of cons to this particular type of accredited calibration. It's the most rigorous level of service, but it does tend to be approximately 30% more expensive due to the cost of achieving and maintaining the accreditation that the facility has to uh, pay for and maintain throughout the year 
and it's a it's a large amount of investing in training and, and documentation and record keeping. Let's take a look at several of the standards that these levels of calibration apply to. One of the most common and one of the broadest is the ISO 9001 quality management system standard. This particular standard specifies requirements for a laboratory or a manufacturer to have a quality management system. And there's usually a general calibration program component for each quality management system that a company has. They're generic, however, and they're not very compliance based. For example, it doesn't go into great detail on what has to be on a label or on a particular certificate, but it talks about the maintaining of the process and how you go about maintaining the calibration uh, policy and records and things of that nature. So companies are not accredited to this standard. They're actually registered to this standard by registration companies or registrars. These companies are all over the world and they don't typically cross over to calibration accreditation companies, but you can have a program that is ISO 9001 uh, registered and thereby be able to prove that you have a calibration component in your quality management system. It means you've met the basic requirements for a calibration process. An offshoot of the 9001 system is the AS9100 series, typically C and D as well, which are for aviation, aerospace, and defense. The requirements are similar, but a little bit more stringent for the aerospace industry. One of the oldest calibration standards is ANSI NCSL Z540.1, last updated in 1994. This is the American National Standard for Calibration. It was derived from an old ISO guide, 25, and a military standard, 45662A, which were the, attempt, the first attempts to try to consolidate and codify the rules for calibration. It is an American standard only. It's typically not accepted internationally. It was withdrawn and superseded by a part of 17025 and also a part of the new Z540.3. However, it's still requested and adopted and accepted by the vast majority of American manufacturers because of its practicality and it meets the needs that they require for their customers. So even though it is in fact withdrawn, it's uh, or superseded, it's still used. Data typically is requested by the customer. If not, it's a pass fail, uh, out of tolerance uh, type of calibration. And uncertainties are required, they're required to keep the uncertainties and they're available should the customer ask for them. Several calibration providers add Z540.1 to their accreditation certificates and get accredited by an accreditation body so that they can have accreditation not only for ISO 17025 but for this American standard as well. The follow on to the Z540.1 standard is the Z540.3 standard. It is also requirements for the calibration of measuring and test equipment and also an American standard. It was published as an attempt to incorporate certain parts of risk analysis and probability of false acceptance, uh, PFA, which is the probability that I will actually pass something that isn't very good. Um, it's not typically accepted internationally again, but it's widely requested only by the military and by the aerospace customers. It's not something that has taken off and has the same level of request as Z540.1. It does have in it flow down requirements. So for example, when you're talking about verifying your vendors who do work that support your calibrations, if you're a provider, you have to make sure that your vendors are in fact doing the same things that Z540.3 requires and you are flowing down those requirements to your vendors. Uh, it was withdrawn, as I said, as an active standard and superseded by the new version of 17025 2017. It will probably still be requested by some customers, but it will probably never, re never rise to the same level of interest as Z540.1. Data and uncertainty are provided with this particular calibration, as well as that 2% probability of false acceptance analysis. The calibration standard that reflects the highest level of rigorous accreditation is the ISO 17025-2017 calibration requirement standard. It specifies specific and general requirements for 
competence of the people, the impartiality of the process, and consistent operation of the laboratories themselves. It is accepted internationally and contains the requirements of what was Z540.3, allowing that standard to be obsoleted. Data and uncertainty are provided with the calibration. And this is a compliance standard with rigorous requirements for administration and execution of all aspects of a calibration provider's process. All parts of the laboratory are assessed and demonstrations are watched to see if people are performing them correctly, records are looked at, training, interactions between customer and provider. Uh, there's quite a bit of record keeping involved and this particular standard represents the highest level of calibration. With all the different levels of calibration and the different standards, it can be confusing to decide which calibration level and which standard to choose to get calibrated against. Typically, it falls into one of three categories. There are regulatory requirements. Those would be specific to your industry. For example, if you are required to follow the <clears throat> regulations of the FDA or the Nuclear Regulatory Commission or some other government agency, there are going to be regulatory requirements that may very well tell you what kind of calibration level and what kind of standard you need to calibrate against. It could be that you have contractual requirements. These are required by your customers. Or there might just be certain specific industry norms that are common to your particular industry, such as construction or, or uh, any kind of manufacturing that is unique. These kinds of things are required in your actual contracts that you have with your customers and are often negotiated out that way. That helps be able to determine what level of calibration you require as well. And you might also consider sometimes it's just your confidence in the requirements that you need. It's your confidence in the calibration process of the provider. You may feel that getting the absolute uh, highest level of calibration verification and accreditation is necessary, or you may feel that certain aspects of a standard such as Z540.1 are more applicable to your particular situation. The choice is yours, but your provider can work with you to determine which would be best for your application. You may be wondering what levels of calibration does Tektronix provide? Well, I've, I've got a slide here that sort of demonstrates that aspect of it. It shows you the various um, standards that we've actually been talking about across the top. And then it talks about the different parts of those standards, the delivery method, how we do the certificate, whether or not the data is provided, whether or not uncertainties are provided, whether or not you have a logo on the certificate, et cetera, on the left-hand side. And you'll be able to, to look at that and see what processes are actually completed by Tektronix itself in, these, in each of these major areas. This is available on our website at tech.com, and you can look at it in the uh, calibration area. And this will maybe help you cross-reference the type of standard versus the type of uh, items that you require for your particular application, whether you need to have certain uh, statements on your certificate, whether you need to have data, whether you need to have guard banding done. It's really infinitely customizable to the customer because you can ask for certain specific things and, and we'll be able to incorporate that into a quote for service. And sometimes very specific requirements are asked for. And if we're able to deliver them, then of course we certainly will. But this gives you a pretty broad idea of the offerings that Tactronics has to help you meet your calibration needs. So in summary, choosing the correct calibration level for your needs helps ensure that you get the right calibration to meet the needs of your quality management system and for your customers. If you understand the difference between traceable, compliant, and accredited calibrations, this should help you be able to decide which is most appropriate. And understanding the different parts of the typical standards that are used in the calibration process should help you determine which of those standards might be best for your particular application. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. And thank you for your time, and I hope it was helpful.